What's going on everyone? My name is Eric and this is the Get Me Out of Here vlog. Today I'm near Spring Green, Wisconsin, located in the southwestern part of the state. And behind me is Taliesin. Taliesin is a historic home, a beautiful house unlike any other that was designed by famous architect Frank Lloyd Wright. And he lived here through most of his life. You can see it right there on the other side of this tree. This is an incredibly historic home and Frank Lloyd Wright is renowned as one of the greatest architects in modern history. All right, I had to move over here to get out from the wind. The, the wind is picking up like crazy here in the valley and uh, I don't want to get a lot of static uh, in my audio. So anyway, I'm still on the Taliesin property. It's right there on the hillside. And Taliesin itself is a Welsh word. It means on the brow. So the house that Frank Lloyd Wright built, it's not on top of the hill, it's kind of in the middle of it, near the top, but not on the very top. Uh, and and that's, that's kind of considered the brow of the hill. So he's not at the top of it, like your head, it, he's kind of on the side, like the brow. Um, and, and Frank Lloyd Wright's ancestry comes from that part of the United Kingdom. So he was kind of paying tribute to his own ancestry because Frank Lloyd Wright grew up here in this area in southwestern Wisconsin. Now, when Frank Lloyd Wright was into his adolescent years, he ended up moving to the city of Chicago. And Chicago at the time, in the late 1800s, was the epicenter of modern-day architecture. It was one of the greatest places to live in the world when it came to architectural talent, new um, designs, new science with architecture and, in, and interior design. And the reason being is because in 1871, something significant happened in Chicago, the fire, the, the great Chicago fire. So most of downtown Chicago burned to the ground and being one of the fastest growing cities in the world at the time, they needed to create more structures for everybody moving into the region. So a lot of brilliant architecture came out of Chicago in the late 1800s and Frank Lloyd Wright was one of those architects that moved to the city in the in the late 19th century and worked under renowned architects such as Louis Sullivan who actually was the very man that invented the skyscraper yes the skyscraper not New York but Chicago is the birthplace of the skyscraper so Frank Lloyd Wright ended up moving and making a name for himself in architecture in the city of Chicago and he built a lot of homes that are still in existence in the Oak Park area that is a western suburb of Chicago. Well for as much of a genius as Frank Lloyd Wright was he had a lot of drama and controversy throughout his life as well. Frank Lloyd Wright ended up being married to three different women throughout his lifetime and he at one point during his first marriage had a mistress on the side in a fair uh, while he was living in Oak Park, Illinois in his younger years. And that was part of how Taliesin came to be. News of his affair got out in Chicago, and at the time, even today it's terrible, but especially at the time in the, in the uh, early 20th century, it didn't look good. It, it, it was a very bad reputation to be cheating on your spouse. So Frank Lloyd Wright ended up moving back to his roots here in southwestern Wisconsin with his mistress and designed and built this home, Taliesin, where he lived with her for a number of years. Now this also caused a complete tragedy here because in 1914, a butler that was working here on the Taliesin property ended up going insane and murdered his mistress, Frank Lloyd Wright's mistress, two of her children and other guests here in the home. The butler ended up locking the windows and doors, setting fire to Taliesin, and murdering them with a hatchet. So today I wanted to pay respect and visit Taliesin. I am a huge Frank Lloyd Wright fan, and th this is something I've never actually toured and seen. I will be moving to Phoenix, Arizona, like I stated in a previous video, in one week. So. Phoenix is where Taliesin West is located, and that is actually a home that Frank Lloyd Wright built after he built this one, Taliesin One, here in Wisconsin. He actually later designed Taliesin West in Phoenix, Arizona, and he actually later died there at Taliesin West in 1959. So before I tour Taliesin West, I thought I needed to come here to the original one and see this 
with my own eyes. So follow me today as we tour one of the most beautiful homes in the world and where the genius himself, Frank Lloyd Wright, lived and worked. No joke, that was probably the longest number of takes I've ever done in, in an intro to date with the wind all of a sudden gusting on and off the highway here with motorcycles continuously going by. And uh, my internet is incredibly spotty too. It doesn't even work well, so I, I, I can't even fact check what I'm telling you. So anyway, yeah, this was probably the most winded intro, no pun intended, that I've ever done to date. All right, let's go see the house. There on the distance are the Romeo and Juliet silos designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. The taller one is supposed to be Romeo and he's standing guard protecting Juliet. But these have been standing here on the Taliesin property for well over 100 years. Arriving at the visitor center, this is where you meet to go on all house and property tours. There's a gift shop inside that I just checked in and we'll be boarding this shuttle shortly to Taliesin, the main property. So I'm looking forward to this. I've never done this before. I've always been a huge Frank Lloyd Wright fan. I've toured his house in Oak Park, Illinois, near Chicago, but I've never toured Taliesin before. This is a first. They do a number of tours of Taliesin and the surrounding property. I will be doing the two hour house tour today, taking you inside Taliesin and around the exterior property. You can also do a quicker one hour house tour that is just the interior of Taliesin. And they also do estate tours that are four hours long that take you to also lots of the surrounding buildings here on the farmland. I didn't have time to do the, four, the full four hour tour today, so opting for the two hour house tour, which is really what I came to see. So I'm excited to finally see Taliesin. So it just got dropped off um, on the property. This is Taliesin and it's a guided tour. So I'm not gonna do a whole lot of talking, just kind of be listening and, and taking things in as we go. But uh, this is absolutely fantastic. The architecture is just so unique and incredible. But anyway, we're gonna be walking the property and going into Taliesin in just a bit. One of the other principles he followed was that you use as many natural materials as you can. Um, this area was heavily forested, so lots of wood, uh, lots of different types available. See all the limestone on the building. Quarry is about three miles away from here. And the walls, all sandstone taken from um, the base of the Wisconsin River. The stone Here's a portion of Taliesin known as the Bell Tower. The original building was built around 1911. A view of the gardens and this really cool stone seating area is where they used to have tea get-togethers. Uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's third wife would ring that Chinese bell and they would gather here for tea. And apparently this is the front entryway, the original one. The horses would come by and drop people off. Uh, where that glass pane is and it would just be open so they would walk right inside Taliesin and they the horses would sit out here and drink from this trough this natural water trough which is now a fountain and then uh, head back through the gates when they uh, when the guests were ready to depart and also Frank Lloyd Wright designed these artistic red pipes they serve no purpose he just thought they looked cool and he, he repurposed them and created this artwork here on the side of the house. <laughs> you got a cat that wanders the property. So anyway, the Imperial Hotel still stood. Here's another view of that bell that would be rung at tea time. Straight ahead is the front entryway of the house and we are Heading this way down the corridor. And 
Here's another view of the bell tower from below. Just an absolute gorgeous house and structure. Truly unique. I've never seen anything like this before. Here's a view of a kind of a utility corridor. Apparently that red door there is where they had an ice house, a refrigerated unit. But uh, you can notice that the stonework, how it's kind of offset, is a just another artistic feature of Frank Lloyd Wright's designs. You can see that red color on the side of the building that is a trademark red that was Frank Lloyd Wright's favorite color and apparently the employees here drive cars of the same red hue and this was the old garage back in the uh, early 1900s that Frank Lloyd Wright would use. Another unique feature is you can see the stone wall is relatively low to the ground and that was because Frank Lloyd Wright didn't want to have this this feeling of being enclosed in. He wanted to enjoy the views of the Wisconsin Valley. So he kind of just used this as a low perimeter, not to keep people out, but to kind of keep the views real. If you look Take up a look at this. Outside they have these Chinese lions, also known as foo dogs, that are actually supposed to be pointed outward away from the property to ward off evil spirits, but in this case they're facing Taliesin. Also just heard um, some of the devastating history of this place. Frank Lloyd Wright, his mistress that he lived here with, was murdered along with her two children and five other people in this house by the butler. The butler went on a murderous rampage and locked all the windows and doors and set the house on fire and then hacked them to death with a hatchet. And he tried to kill himself by swallowing poison, ended up scarring his throat and esophagus and stomach and uh, was un unable to speak or eat and starved to death 10 days later. So this whole house was burned to the ground. Several people murdered inside the first house, Taliesin one, and then Frank Lloyd Wright rebuilt this house in 1915, 1916, called Taliesin two. Taliesin two also burned down in 1925 due to electrical wiring issues. And Taliesin three, this is the structure I am looking at now, was built shortly thereafter that. So there has actually been three Taliesins. One, two, and this is the third rendition. You can really tell why he decided to build this house here in southwestern Wisconsin. The landscape is absolutely gorgeous. The rolling hills, the greenery. Just absolutely gorgeous out here in, in the month of May during the spring. This is the new entryway that he built in the mid-1920s. And uh, this garage here is for the early automobiles of that era. Would drive up, park, and then walk up this stone, this stone staircase into the, the newer entryway. And it looks like we're going to be heading inside. I love that there's a bunch of bird nests all around the house. I'm assuming that's a barn swallow. And a lot of nature just kind of living all around this house. You can see that we have stepped up amongst the tree line and he's got the roof angled differently, different elevations of roof to kind of to kind of mimic that tree line. Frank Lloyd Wright must have been a shorter fellow because you can see the roof line and the ceiling is not very high up. But um, he had lifts in his shoes and then he wore this top hat. He did say in later years that, well, maybe I would have designed things a little differently, um, but he didn't. So, Always the low ceilings, what he was trying to achieve. So before walking inside, there's an old grate 
And if you look inside, Frank Lloyd Wright left the grate here so you could see the remnants of the fire, the first fire that that butler tried to burn the house down with, though that's the original wood all burnt up and you can actually smell it after a hundred years. That's so crazy. All right, but about ready to enter the house and look out. I mean, I'm five foot ten. My head is just grazing the top of this roof. So we have the tall windows, that sweeping high ceiling, um, all the detailing brings your eye down to the windows. Keep just about everything in plywood. Um, plywood today is considered, we, we laugh, you said I'm building my house in plywood. Back then it was, it was a cheaper material, but not as cheap as it would be today. Um, and it was very pliable, pliable and it was very plentiful. In his lifetime, he had about, well, over a thousand designs. About 400 buildings were built. Um, he had an incredible sense of retention. It was all in his head, just like when he designed Falling Water. It just locked in when he looked at a landscape. He knew just what to do. This is the very table that Frank Lloyd Wright created. One of his greatest works. It was, a, it was a home in Pennsylvania called Falling Water. It's actually a place I've always wanted to visit, but he actually created Falling Water right here on this desk. There above the mantle is a picture of his mom, Frank Lloyd Wright's mother. And look at this massive stone fireplace here in the drafting room. And we're gonna be proceeding deeper into the house. You can see we, we're leaving this wide open room and kind of going into more of a condensed hallway. So Frank Lloyd Wright, he always had kind of a, a unique way of changing shapes as you go through different rooms in the house. It was always wood or, or um, um, sometimes not upholstered. So, um, and this piece right here in the study room is actually by Frank Lloyd Wright's old architectural headmaster, Louis Sullivan, who actually invented the skyscraper in Chicago. This is the smallest organ I've ever seen. I don't know if Frank Lloyd Wright played it, this organ, or if he was into music at all, but I thought that was kind of unique. So you can really see the characteristics of Frank Lloyd Wright's style. You, got, you know, you had these big, wide open rooms that would turn into these smaller areas of compression. You could see the ceiling elevations changing. So when you walked out of these smaller corridors and into these big open rooms, it really kind of gave you just kind of a, kind of a feeling of, of awe. You're talking about right the here, tile. they've got a red tile the front entryway. That's actually Frank so, Lloyd Wright's you know, signature. I'm not sure if they were all red. I think his right was there. white with red and yeah. Some more of that signature Cherokee red that Frank Lloyd Wright loved. That was his favorite color there on the windowsills. And we are heading inside the house. So I guess the entryway we were in earlier was actually the drafting department. That was where the, the school that Frank Lloyd Wright had training young and upcoming architects. But now we're actually entering the main house here in Taliesin. He would think that he was in a boat on a lake or a river. Just the way that the light danced off the stone, you can almost feel what, what he was thinking, just those little ripples in the water. So before we head into the original master bedroom, if you want to take a look there, be my guest. So just confirmed, Frank Lloyd Wright did play piano. In fact, he was a very gifted piano player, and that's why there are instruments throughout this property. So I was kind of on the right track when I saw that organ earlier, and this is a music stand that Frank Lloyd Wright created. It almost looks like a drafting table, but it's actually a music stand. Now you can see the treetops outside, and uh, I can't see them as well standing up, but if I sit down in these chairs, you are... You're, you're at face view of the treetops, but when you stand up, it, it's kind of obscured a little more. Again, 
just amazing seeing how open the main living room is and then they've got more of these compression points in these seated areas where the ceiling dips down. Now look at that view of Wisconsin. Just breathtaking. What's also interesting is a lot of the stone flooring is waxed. It's not something I've ever really seen before. And look at this gorgeous walkway and cantilevers outside. And uh, you can walk, well, we can't walk out there during the tour, but back in the day, Frank Lloyd Wright could walk out there and just take in the beauty of this Wisconsin Valley. These are some more of the lights that Frank Lloyd Wright designed out of plywood. And he actually salvaged many things from the fires of Taliesin 1 and 2. And this statue here is called a Blossom of the Soul, salvaged from the fire that murdered his mistress and several other people. So he kept it here as kind of a tribute to those that lost their lives. You can also see the stone there is colored red, and that's also left over from the fire. The fire brought out the minerals and that stonework. So there are remnants of the original Taliesin that he kind of left and the new ones. One of the bedrooms here in Taliesin. And apparently uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's daughter had a room on the other side of that cupboard and she would open that up and perform puppet shows for the family from up there. So that's pretty cool. But um, again, in this room, the Blue Loja was just another family space. Um, and of course, He's always got his art feature. Um, he had he had absolutely magnificent taste in art, and he loved it so much. Unfortunately, a lot of it went up in smoke uh, during Taliesin too. Some more blossoms of the soul on the front of the fireplace. These little this plates. artwork here is from the circa 1500s and then also Japan. A There's more located here as well from Frank Lloyd Wright's original collection. And we are entering another compression point. You can see the ceiling dropping down to give us, uh, once we exit this compression point, a kind of a grandiose feeling. When we enter another larger room, and you can see another piano here as well. This one's another unique piano. I've never really seen the, Oh, that's a harpsichord. Oh, phenomenal. He's got the double uh, layers to it. That's awesome. So yeah, he was a... Uh, definitely obsessed with playing piano. He was an avid piano player. Um, but in later years, he decided that he wanted to glass that space in and have another visitor space. So um, he decided to close this. He put an extra opening in the fireplace. Um, and interestingly enough, one of his first visitors was Solomon Guggenheim. If you've ever heard of the Guggenheim Museum, um, this is where they sat down. And they hammered out plans for the Guggenheim Museum. Unfor yeah, nice. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it took about 15 years. To I love this book, Old MacDonald sure. Head of Farm yes. by um, MacDonald in um, Frank Lloyd Wright's his wife, Olga library Vala, collection. She was from a warm climate. Some of her After 1903, um, what? And here at the original um, entryway that was closed really off, in, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright had a collection there. of seashells so because he felt that the animals that life. lived in these shells but were natural mother, architects. They all had unique homes and houses her. that they and she, grew in and built for themselves through evolution. I love this fireplace here as well. There's another seating area. You can cozy up next to the fire. So this green perfume bottle is original. That was Frank Lloyd Wright's third wife's 
perfume bottle, and this was her bedroom. They slept in different rooms because Frank Lloyd Wright never slept. His mind was always going through drafting and piano performance and all the work that he did over the years. He just never slept. Kind of a renaissance man. So this is Frank Lloyd Wright's bedroom. And this is the little bed that he would sleep on when he did sleep. Again, he apparently rarely slept. In fact, he would take a morning dip in this pool, this diving pool, which at the time was nine feet deep. He would dive into that pool to wake himself up in the morning and get ready for day. But this is Frank Lloyd Wright's bedroom. He had this drafting table, and again, you have these different elevated ceilings and a lot of windows to kind of give you that feeling that you're outdoors. Apparently this was Frank Lloyd Wright's favorite room in the house, which kind of makes sense because most people probably prefer their bedroom over other spaces. But you can see from the end of his bedroom, you can see straight down the hallway. So a lot of open space inside Taliesin. All right, we're going to step outside. A closer look of Frank Lloyd Wright's original diving pool. It's, it's pretty small. And it's not nine feet like it used to be today, but this apparently was nine feet deep and Frank Lloyd Wright would come out of his bedroom in the morning and take a dip in the pool. I'm not going to reenact that. Outside on the balcony, right across the way there, you see a small church that's Unity Chapel. And that's where Frank Lloyd Wright's grave is located at. It is extremely breezy all of a sudden, but yeah, this is Frank Lloyd Wright's house. Now he didn't die in this house. In fact, there's a Taliesin West in Phoenix, Arizona, which since I'm moving to Phoenix in one week, I will be touring that this summer as well. That's partly why I wanted to come here to make a pilgrimage to the original Taliesin before seeing Taliesin West. So that, this is fascinating to see. Six dive from the other side. <laughs> Still looks pretty nice for pigsty. Apparently that building was a pigsty. This is the fanciest pigsty I've ever seen. Goodbye, Taliesin. Heading back to the visitor center. Now what I just learned at the end of the tour is that Frank Lloyd Wright actually designed this very visitor center that I'm standing in before he died. So this is awesome. All of this is designed by Frank Lloyd Wright. In the gift shop, look at all of these books you can purchase on the life of Frank Lloyd Wright and his architectural works. I just found this Kind of a funny quotable notables Frank Lloyd Wright. It's like a sticker book. But look at that. Frank Lloyd Wright looks like some kind of renegade architect. Some like architectural cowboy. <laughs> it's kind of funny. There's also a book about the murders that took place here at Taliesin in 1914 with a hatchet. So if you want to read up more about the grisly murders, you can get this book. This statue here is very reminiscent to Frank Lloyd Wright's style in the early 20th century. Look at this. This is a picture of falling water. Probably Frank Lloyd Wright's most famous house that he designed in the woods in Pennsylvania. There's actually a stream and a waterfall flowing below the house. This is a location I've always wanted to visit. So this is top of my bucket list especially now that I've seen Taliesin today. Here's a photo of a very dapper looking Frank Lloyd Wright. A little bit later in life, you can tell he's, he's definitely in his older years, stepping out of a car. Oh, and this is awesome. They even have a rendering of the Illinois. This was a skyscraper that Frank Lloyd Wright designed in the early mid 20th century that was supposed to be a mile high. Of course, that never came to fruition. This never came to be. But what's remarkable about this is this looks a lot like the Burj Khalifa and some of the towers going up in the Middle East right now. 
yeah, a mile high. That is insane. <laughs> that would be, that would by far be, that would dwarf every other structure on the planet even today. Through the trees behind the visitor center is the Wisconsin River. And right next to the parking lot is a Wisconsin historical marker. This was where a military crossing took place during the Black Hawk Indian War of 1832. Abraham Lincoln actually was a soldier during that war. He didn't see any actual fighting, but he was actually in the army at the time of the Black Hawk War and actually had to help bury soldiers that were killed in some of the battles in Northern Illinois. Some history for you in this Midwestern area. This is Unity Chapel, what was the final resting place of Frank Lloyd Wright. And it is located pretty much right across the way from Taliesin. There is a marker here stating that the Unity Chapel was dedicated in 1886. So let's enter through the cast iron gate to the cemetery, which is located behind the chapel and pay respects to Frank Lloyd Wright and his family. Here's the small cemetery behind the church, but I have no idea which grave or tombstone is Frank Lloyd Wright's. I have no internet service here in the valley, so I'm gonna have to look around and see if I can spot it. And of course, there's a guy mowing the lawn today on Memorial Day of all days. Wind and lawnmowers, that has been the theme of the vlog today. Here it is, what was the final resting place of Frank Lloyd Wright. 1869 to 1959. He's got this funky looking stone that almost looks like the shape of the state of Illinois, but he was a diehard Wisconsin boy, so that's not what he was going for with this rock. But you, you could see that artistic appeal that Frank Lloyd Wright has. There's also a stained glass backdrop with a, a uh, motto that says, love of an idea is love of God. So here is the grave of Frank Lloyd Wright. And yes, there's a guy mowing the cemetery on Memorial Day. I had to get over here to get away from the lawnmower. I don't know why they're mowing a cemetery on Memorial Day, but they are. Anyway, there is more to the story. There's a reason why I was saying this was Frank Lloyd Wright's final resting place, and not is. Frank Lloyd Wright passed away in 1959 at his Talia Taliesin West house in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, when he was buried in 1959, he was buried here across the street from the original Taliesin in Wisconsin because the rest of his family is also buried here at, at this cemetery. Well, his third wife, his third marriage, who was 30 years younger than him, ended up living another 30 years and she passed away in 1985. Well, she wanted nothing to do with this Wisconsin property, so she actually had somebody come to the cemetery in the darkness of night and dig up the body of Frank Lloyd Wright and had him cremated and his ashes sprinkled with her ashes at Tal Taliesin West in Phoenix. So there's a whole crazy story where the body of Frank Lloyd Wright was actually exhumed and then cremated and sprinkled at his Taliesin property in Phoenix, the West property. So he's actually not buried here anymore, but they've kept his, his, tomb, his tomb, his marker, here at the Wisconsin site. So most people come to this location to pay their respects to the famous architect. Well, that's gonna do it for today. I hope you enjoyed your tour 
of the historic and beautiful Taliesin and learned a little more about the wild and brilliant life of Frank Lloyd Wright. This is Eric with the Get Me Out of Here vlog, and it's time for me to get out of here. Thanks for watching. And I think we'll be boarding this shuttle to the actual house to tally to tally us to, to tally Essen. And of course, there's a guy mowing the lawn today on Memorial Day of all days.